Hello, 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 hello. I am Controlled Pairs with Controlled Pairs Gaming, and we have liftoff. Folks, thanks for tuning in today. This is part two of my ongoing mini-series on the new ore extraction, fuel production and refining mechanic that has been introduced into Kerbal Space Program 1.0. If you haven't seen part one of the video, go ahead and check out my channel grab part one and uh, and watch that to so I actually go over all of the mechanics involved with trying to drill on the moon in this case and extract or turn it into fuel and then use it to power your spacecraft what you're seeing right now is separation of stage one my liquid fuel boosters on this launch stage of my drill that is headed to the moon I always like showing the beginning of launches and this isn't the most attractive spacecraft for sure that giant fairing on the front is uh it's kind of a blight but it's definitely necessary with the new aerodynamic model and so i threw it on there here we separate the launch stage of the vessel you see those fairings come off and the massive booster come off the back and it's really pretty these new fairings i, th I think that uh that squad did a great job with the development of the fairing system and a lot of these new parts now you can see underneath that fairing I had my Mooner drill on the front. You should be familiar with it from my previous episodes. One funny mistake I did make, and I didn't even bother to go back and fix it, is I left parachutes on my Mooner drill. We're going to the moon. I don't need parachutes. There's no air. I just had the parachutes on there for the testing phase, but I forgot to remove them. I'm hauling a little bit of extra weight, but no big deal. Uh, we go ahead and circularize our orbit, deploy our solar panels and start soaking up some lovely sunlight and power in this bad boy now that we are out of the atmosphere. You can see there is quite a few solar panels on the drill. That is because it takes a lot of power to continuously drill and of course that is the goal to get the drill to the moon, put it on the surface of the moon and then continuously mine for ore that I will also be converting into liquid fuel, oxidizer and mono propellant. You see, I've lined up my maneuver node now, and I've began my tr uh, my transfer burn from Kerbin to the moon. We're going to lose our main engine here pretty early on in the process, so we'll dump that and leave it here in a big elliptical orbit around Kerbin. We fire our last four engines and finish the rest of our transfer burn. Now this craft is pretty heavy. I had to bring along a lot of fuel because in it, I have to bring along a lot of instruments as well. I have the ISRU converter, which does the, the important work of actually converting that ore into fuel. I've got storage tanks, which stores raw ore. And then I've got the batteries, the landing legs, the solar panels, the command module itself. So all in all, it's really heavy. So it's not very efficient as far as a thrust to weight ratio is concerned. That said, because I have four engines on the bottom of this thing, I, I can do pretty good so long as I'm near the moon and I'm actually uh, out of Kerbin's atmosphere. So we've captured the moon and we've completed our first uh, burn, our capture burn. Now we're going to warp around to the other side of the moon and we are going to orient ourselves retrograde and bring down that orbit right over where we want to land. If you recall from my last video, I do have a rover on the surface of the moon. I didn't drive the rover all the way um, to the landing site that I have in mind just because it was too far away and frankly I got a little bit lazy. However, using the scanner, I did locate the site that I want to land at and it is a crater that is 25 to 30 kilometers away from my rover. And so this burn that I'm conducting right now is going to put me right over the top of that landing site and hopefully we'll be able to set it down nice and gently right where I would planned. There's a pretty good high concentration of ore there and it will set us up for success in the future. So conducted that burn, we're jumping back into the map screen, doing another, another maneuver node. This one is going to put us right over the top of that landing site. And here's where all the fun begins to happen. For those of you guys who have tried it before, you know that landing on any planet is, while it's a very simple thing in practice, 
we all know that whenever you actually get up there and start doing it, sometimes it takes more than one attempt, sometimes it goes completely awry. Believe it or not, I did this entire mission in one take. So it might not be perfect, but I'm pretty proud just because I was able to do it on the first shot, which I was pretty surprised with. So we knocked out our final burn and we are beginning to slow down as we approach the landing site. You can see off in the distance the markers for both my the debris that I used, uh, the debris that was the craft that brought my rover to the moon as well as the rover itself. We've lowered our landing gear and we've turned on our lights and we are ready to start descending and slowing down and trying to put this thing on the ground. I know I want to land in one of these craters because you get higher concentrations of ore in the crater. I've got about 561 fuel left and if you look at my Kerbal Engineer over there on the far right, my Delta V total remaining is 687. We're only traveling at 411 meters per second so I'll be just fine and able to slow down completely. But I do need to be efficient so I wait till I got pretty low to the ground before I maxed out my throttle here and reduce my speed all the way down as we approach our landing site in this little crater. Now that we get close to landing, I'm looking for a spot that's pretty flat and that's away from most debris so that I can get all of my landing legs on the ground, that my drill will be able to touch the ground, and my fueler will be able to maneuver to the docking port that is located on the side of my Mooner drill. So I still have SAS engaged. We've reduced our speed to under 20 meters per second. We're going to hover right around there until we completely lower ourselves down. Fortunately, the portion of the moon that we're landing on today is in the sunlight, so I'm able to monitor my descent very easily by looking at the shadow. Alternatively, I would have to go into the cockpit with Jeb and actually look at the radar, which I can do, but I like being out here because it's much much more exciting and it's fun to watch. So we have a very calm descent, no major debris located beneath us. It looks like this is a good spot to go ahead and set it down. My docking port is going to be located in a position that the fueler will be able to easily access and we got a rock beneath us but drifting just enough away from it that we should be just fine. and touchdown a very gentle descent and a a believe it or not a pretty uneventful trip to the moon which is something that i am not able to do very often at least with such success very often so now that we're here we can take a pretty good look at at our little mining vessel we retract the solar panel so that we can take jeb out and do a quick survey of the ground and plant a flag to commemorate the landing of the first Mooner mining vessel. Jeb makes his way down the ladder, and I think this thing looks pretty good now that we've gotten it on the surface of the moon. The, the lights illuminate the ground pretty good, and uh, I love the way the solar panels look. Haha, <laughs> and Jeb activating his little personal RCS thrusters and jumping around, having a good old time. Everything on the craft looks good. You can see my docking port over there is going to be easily accessible as intended, which is outstanding. And one of the benefits of being able to convert this ore into fuel is, even though I have less than 100 units of fuel left on my mining vessel, I can easily convert that ore into fuel and then relocate that mining vessel as needed. So maybe later on I take that rover and explore a little bit and I find an area that is more rich in in ore than the place that I landed. Well, I can easily refuel the tanks on my mining vessel and make my way over there. Ah, and Jeb plants his flag and has reason to celebrate. And we'll name this site the Moon Drilling Site as a reference whenever I bring my fueler and other craft up. And Jeb makes his way back to the drill he will jump back up into the command pod and we will get to work drilling and converting some of this ore into fuel so that 
we can do all sorts of exciting stuff in space and extend the range of all of our future missions to the moon. So once Jeb makes his way up the ladder and gets boarded back onto the vessel, we'll redeploy those solar panels to make sure that we have maximum energy going to our drill. We'll retract the ladders. I have those bound to an action group. And then we'll go ahead and we'll extend and activate the drill. And it is the moment of truth. Will the drill function as intended? So we go ahead and deploy the drill. It easily makes its way all the way to the ground and starts drilling. And as you can see in the top right portion of the screen, we are filling up with ore. So now that we're filling up with ore, we will be able to convert that ore into fuel. I really appreciate you guys checking out the video today. I hope you enjoy it. Stay tuned as I bring the Mooner Fueler up to the surface of the moon and demonstrate how you can use it to refuel vessels in orbit around the moon. And until next time, this is Controlled Pairs, signing off.